this recorded segment um, will uh, begin with Commissioner Steinbrook, a few comments, and then uh, Commissioner McCarthy, um, the uh, president of the Port of Tacoma Commission, and may I mention Peter Steinbrook is the uh, president of the Port of Seattle Commission. Um, and then uh, uh, after their comments, we're going to hear from uh, John Wolf, who will have uh, the latest cargo stats. Uh, he'll take uh, uh, any questions you may have. And then uh, today, he's going to introduce our special guest, uh, Matt Harris, who's the uh, head of the uh, Washington State Potato Commission, uh, to give you an idea of what the potato industry uh, has been going through uh, this year in, the, in this uh, day of uh, uh, COVID and tariffs and um, all the uh, ramifications that come with each of these crises that we've been dealing with. And so uh, without any um, uh, uh, further delay, um, uh, Commissioner Steinbrook. Okay. Thank you. Am I unmuted? You are. Oh, excellent. Thanks, Peter. Uh, Peter one and Peter two. This is Peter Steinbrook. I'm uh, Port of Seattle Commission President and Co-Chair of the Great Northwest Sea Alliance. And I'm happy to be here today and support the um, efforts here with, with regard to answering questions uh, at this op uh, media event opportunity. Uh, as you know, uh, the Seaport Alliance is part of critical infrastructure, critical to the role of recovery, uh, in this health crisis. Uh, we are a key global supply chain and it goes in both directions. Our agricultural products in particular, which we'll be hearing more about today, uh, are, uh, are one of our major exports and we rely on a functioning operational seaport and a gateway to the Pacific. We'll continue to work with our partners to find the best path, pathway forward with these challenges and another dual challenge at this time is the issue of the damaged West Seattle Bridge, high bridge uh, that spans across the Duwamish. It doesn't directly tie into uh, our terminals, but it is a key part of the infrastructure network there. And it, it uh, being taken out of service has reduced the capacity east-west, I think by about as much as 60%. So that's a real challenge for us. I do serve on the mayor's recently uh, designated a community task force on the West Seattle Bridge. We're actually meeting this afternoon. Um, and I am going to be closely monitoring and engaged in efforts to determine the best path forward with regard to whether it be a repair or replacement and how we're going to um, do contingency planning and traffic mitigation that will prioritize freight and access to our terminals at Harbor, at Harbor Island and T5. We just uh, have to ensure uh, the continued viability there. Um, so that, as you know, also supports thousands of jobs in the state of Washington. Uh, and also uh, the Manufacturing Industrial Center, the Duwamish MIC is just next door as well. And it is affected and will be by what uh, happens with the West Seattle Bridge. As we also have the critical supply chain links to Alaska and Hawaii. Alaska is 80 plus per dependent on shipments from, from our, our seaport and our port here. And as is Hawaii significantly dependent uh, on their weekly supplies. So we do appreciate the, uh, the city's immediate prioritization of freight along with transit and emergency vehicles uh, because the lower bridge is of limited capacity, obviously. There are two other bridges in the area, but uh, the, the city has wisely um, supported and recognized and supported our needs by prioritizing freight on the lower bridge. Lastly, I wanna say we've been living through some extremely challenging and difficult times. Uh, the Port of Seattle firmly supports Black Lives Matter and the movement to uh, address uh, policing issues both locally and throughout the country, among other things, and the need to undo a, a systemic racism in our country and to advance justice and equality for all at this critical time. Lastly, I'll mention Friday is a very important ho holiday of 
event, if you will. It's Juneteenth, and it's a celebration not of the emancipation of slaves by Lincoln, but of the news of the emancipation that came six months later uh, than the actual emancipation when it arrived by horseback in Texas. So that was the day of emancipation notice to Texans and, tex te and, and Texas slaves who endured an additional time after the emancipation. And that's why it's such an important holiday celebration event in history, not just for blacks, but for all of us. With that, I will turn it over to Commissioner McCarthy if he's here now. Uh, good morning. Uh, I'm John McCarthy, co-chair of the Alliance, president of the Port of Tacoma Commission. Thank you, Peter and Peter. Yes, we are committed to keep, keeping our cargo flowing efficiently and safely throughout the gateway. We do more than our part to keep the economy churning and people employed through both strong exports and import activities at our facilities. You know, as has been mentioned, we've kind of had triple hits recently, one for the last year and a half, uh, trade wars and tariffs. Uh, since March, we've had a pandemic, and then, of course, we've had the news with regard to the West Seattle Bridge. That news is particularly concerning to the Port of Tacoma and the Northwest Seaport Alliance. As Peter mentioned, just a reminder, the alliance has only been in existence for five years, and after Tacoma and Seattle had competed for decades, we got together uh, to try to uh, build the trade uh, to the Pacific Northwest region. This is the largest right now investment by the Port of Tacoma in Seattle, the investment we're making on Terminal 5, over $140 million. So for us, we have a big stake in the success of the alliance and success of resolution of that particular problem. Uh, as Peter said, uh, we also are celebrating uh, Juneteenth, and I don't want to go any further, but I'd be happy to answer any questions uh, later. Thank you. I'll turn it over to John Wolf, our CEO of the Northwest Seaport Alliance. Thank you, Commissioner McCarthy. And I want to echo the commissioner's uh, comments, both Commissioner Steinbrook and McCarthy's remarks on the recent events around social injustice and inequity. Uh, the Northwest Seaport Alliance strongly opposes racist acts of oppression in all forms. As an international gateway, we respect and value the rich diversity of our employees, customers, stakeholders, and communities. And this Friday, the ILW dock workers at approximately 29 West Coast ports will stop work for eight hours in, op in observation wow. of, the, uh, of uh, Juneteenth. ILW holds uh, a stop work membership meeting every month during uh, the night shift. And for this month, the ILWU and the Pacific Maritime Association have agreed to move the meeting to June 19th to allow members to participate in the Juneteenth activities. The Northwest Seaport Alliance supports their decision to observe this holiday in solidarity with the Black Lives Matter movement. We as an organization continue to look for opportunities to provide an inclusive workplace that is free from all forms of discrimination and harassment. So now I'd like to discuss our May cargo volumes. Uh, the Northwest Seaport Alliance Gateway remains open and operational during this health crisis. The seaport plays a critical role in supporting the nation's economic recovery. And we are committed to keeping cargo flowing efficiently and safely through our gateway in partnership with our other key stakeholders. As expected, the economic fallout from COVID pandemic combined with the ongoing tariff war continues to disrupt the global supply chain. In the month of May, the Seaport Alliance handled 240,671 TEUs. Compared to May of 2019, the Seaport Alliance total container volumes for May are down about 24%. Through the first five months of 2020, overall container volumes declined approximately 19% compared to the same time last year. As you all know, uh, we have a diversified uh, business portfolio here within the Seaport Alliance. And uh, part of that is our domestic trade with Hawaii and Guam, or Hawaii, Guam and, uh, and uh, Alaska. 
for domestic trade, total container volumes to Alaska and Hawaii, Guam are down about 6% year to date. In addition, our break bulk cargo volumes were down about 1% year over year, and our auto volumes were down approximately 22% year over year. Our gateway experienced a total of 46 canceled sailings through May. This was mainly driven by the lingering trade dispute with China and the global uh, coronavirus pandemic. The shipping lines have announced 17 more canceled sailings through this year for a total of 63 to, uh, canceled sailings. And this number is still pretty fluid. This is an unprecedented number of canceled sailings. To put things into perspective, we had a total of 58 canceled sailings in all of 2019. These canceled sailings not only disrupt terminal operations in Seattle and Tacoma, they create a ripple effect across the whole supply chain. In terms of jobs, these impacts are felt by our longshore workers, the truck drivers, our rail operators, and many others who help us move cargo through our gateway. Over the last several weeks, we've seen a 25 to 35% drop in longshore hours as compared to 2019. As a consumer, you may notice your online purchases taking a bit longer to arrive. And that's an example of the disruption in the supply chain. For our export customers shipping goods through Asia and other countries, these canceled sailings could mean not enough containers to put their agricultural goods uh, on vessels to these foreign markets. So before I hand this over uh, to our uh, special guest, Matt Harris of the Washington State Potato Commission, I'd like to take any questions from the media. Any questions that you're seeing, Peter? I am not, um, but we can certainly um, uh, give folks another minute. And if uh, they come up with a good question in the next um, a few minutes here, we're more than happy to, uh, to call on you. And uh, certainly any uh, follow-up opportunities that you want to take advantage of are more than welcome as well. Okay. Well, then we'll move to uh, the next part of our, uh, our, say, our meeting, and that is uh, to talk more about these impacts. Um, and again, we have Matt Harris with the Washington State Potato Commission on the call from Moses Lake, Washington. Uh, potatoes are uh, one of the Washington's top agricultural export goods. Our gateway exports 67,000 TUs or $800 million worth of frozen French fries just in, in all of 2019. And I want to thank Matt for joining us today and provide some input as to how COVID and the trade war is affecting the potato industry. With that, I'll turn it over to Matt Harris. Thank you, John. And I want to just say a thank you to the, the team at the Northwest Seaport Alliance and at our partnerships with with the terminal operators and then also the, the ILWU who are, are helping us through these, uh, these critical, uh, this critical period in our, our US and our global history. Um, just a little bit about our industry and in general. Um, we, uh, we usually grow about 165,000 acres of potatoes in Washington state. And that will net close to 10 billion pounds of potatoes. And that crop is turned into what America loves and the world loves, which is that great French fry. And we export that fry to over 50 countries. As the trade wars had taken its toll on our, our growers and our markets, uh, the pandemic came in and was, it was like that, uh, that uppercut that really put us on our heels and now we're on the ropes. We've seen a reduction in our in our crops, uh, we've probably are going. We're we're probably going to see 20,000 or so more or less acres planted this year. Um, and the reality is, is that our our food that we produce is really uh, 
grown for food service. We do have a, a healthy retail market, but the majority of our crop is for food service. And when consumers are not able to go to their favorite restaurant, whether that's in Beijing or, or in Moses Lake, Washington, we, we are hurt. And, and so we're part of that food, food system, that food supply chain. And, and so we've seen growers had to plow under their crop for the 2020 year. We have still the 2019 crop remaining in storage. So this has been a, a real challenge. Um, and in these challenging times, our growers have noticed that, you know, people are hurting. And so they came up with a, a program called the Road to One Million, where we uh, worked with our partners in, in food distribution and food pantries and, and food services to, to donate a, a million pounds of potatoes. And we were very successful at that. It was a great program that we were able to help our communities that have supported us in, in purchasing uh, uh, our potato products. So, you know, we, we have seen some, some difficult times and, and now we're hopeful that as, as we progress through this pandemic, we can find some stability, find some growth in our market space and all together heal as a as a country as a state and as an as as a global economy